Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you all. How are you doing? Welcome to another driving test. So this was a test at Bromley Test Center on the 4th of February 2022. Test took place at 9.07 in the morning. Now, unfortunately, this was one of those tests failed just under four minutes at the start of the test because of something that could have been avoided. Now, this only happened mainly because of nerves. So when you're nervous, remember, you cannot think clearly and you make decisions that you should not have made. So, yeah let's watch as it goes on and then you can see as you watch and again remember be careful when you're exiting or entering the driving test center car park because the space is very narrow and you've got cars parked on the side plus sometimes you may have Lidu's trucks making deliveries so be very careful lean forward so that you can improve your view and watch out for cars coming out of Lidu's car park as well So, after turning right onto Bontashi Road, the learner was asked to pull up on the left. And guess what happened? So the learner pulled up right at this point so close to the van on the opposite side of the road and the problem with this is it makes it difficult for vehicles to continue so it is now blocking traffic because vehicles behind can no longer pass. Now if he had created enough space and avoid pulling up next to this van the traffic could have continued moving across without that being an obstruction. So yeah. He got his first serious fault at that point. The examiner had to make them move on as soon as possible to avoid blocking the traffic for too long. And as he moved on again, his observation, awareness and decision was wrong again. So he moves off just as his red car was passing the van. And that definitely was not the best decision to do. Now, the examiner only gave a minor fault for this. But she commented on that and was quite unhappy with that decision in the end so remember that these things are subjective so he got a minor fault for that situation but another person could give you a serious fault for that for example i could give a serious fault myself for that situation there for example if that red car was to have been moving faster than it was that could have changed 
the situation and the result there. So be careful and remember, relax and make right judgments. And just after that situation earlier on, the examiner asked the learner to turn the red day mister on and this was because as you can see it was a rainy day and there was a um, condensation in the car and you couldn't really see clearly from the back windscreen and the learner could not do that and that was why you saw earlier on when the windscreen washer for the front windscreen came on that's because he was trying to get his way around to put it on now this was just because of poor preparation and that's why this happens <music> So here they are at the car park and at this point they are coming to do a forward bay parking. So the learner again struggled here and as you would see he took a while to actually complete the maneuver. And um, yeah, he got a minor fault for control for the maneuver. And this is what happens to you when anxiety kicks in. So you see a lot of spaces and you still can't make up your mind takes the first stop and maybe not so changes his mind again moves forward again and still not but eventually he finds a space now remember you're not supposed to rush these maneuvers or whatever the case might be but at the same time we are not expecting you to take forever like people need to get somewhere my problem here is what if there are other cars behind or maybe other learners on test behind and you're taking this long to make that decision in real life you've got to be realistic how are people going to react to this behind you if you're taking this long to actually make a decision in the first place don't forget there are lots of empty bays look plenty of them so bear that in mind but the mistake that he made now i want you to bear this in mind this car park is a one-way system now if you're parking and doing a forward bay parking remember the first basic principle if you're parking to your left then keep as much as possible to your right and if you're parking to the right keep as much as possible to your left so that that way once you take the turn you'd have enough room and space to actually go and straighten your car if you don't do this and you're too close to your left which is what is happening here right now he wasn't able to move and straighten up which means you're gonna have to reverse and that is another extra work you don't want to do and this is where he got the minor fault because again when anxiety is knocking on your door even the most simplest things that you can do becomes a mathematical task so he fidgets with the gear twisting it back and forth because i know what it is so yeah that happens a couple of times in lessons as well and it's not just this particular learner learners typically do that once they start to get ang um, anxious you start to twist them you know you you can't differentiate between your drive and reverse so yeah bear this in mind plan yourself relax all right
so five minutes later they finally made it so if you actually notice this at all you'd realize that five minutes of this test was spent at the car park trying to do a forward bay parking so you have to be realistic with yourself and ask yourself would you really spend five minutes at a car park when you go to the supermarket so this is where again a subjective opinion comes in where someone else could decide to cancel or terminate that maneuver there and just mark it as a fail like of course you couldn't complete it on time so bear this in mind don't take too long relax remember your practice and your lessons and just do what you've got to do So the next decision I had is what changed everything and this is where the examiner decided to finish the test early. So if you keep an eye on the sat nav, you would notice that the next instruction is going straight ahead at that roundabout. So he was actually supposed to take the second exit at the roundabout. But again, when you're too nervous and anxiety is begging you to make him or her a friend and you decide to be you know good samaritan and you buy into that this is what happens so i know the sat nav would talk and tell you take the second exit and even if that doesn't happen you can see the, the picture so yeah as you would see he took a right turn which is the third exit and this was the end and let's watch what happens next So as you can see, he took the wrong turn and at that point, examiner decides, you know what, time to pack it up, I've had enough, let's go back home and this was it. So he took the perfect way to go back home, to head back to the test center and of course the examiner knows the way so she decides to pack up the independence driving and that's the end of it. So we're now heading back home and this was it so that was not a minor by the way but right? i mean sorry that was not a serious by the way but it was just that point where you've decided as an examiner or a manager that you know what i've seen enough there's no point continuing this he was just too anxious i mean when they got back the examiner mentioned it herself and she actually asked is this your first test and she said because you're too nervous like you've got to relax and this should say a lot so you've got to relax and by the way this is the third test and i always say at the third time you've got to remind yourself i know the worst case scenario you know what's gonna happen the worst case is is either you pass which is the best case scenario or the worst case scenario is you fail and then you're going to come back again and do it so since you know that's what's going to happen then just relax and just enjoy whatever's going to happen let it happen it's not going to be anything more than either fail or pass so just chill back and just take the examiner on a nice ride let him or her you know feel comfortable and just enjoy the drive you don't want them looking over your shoulders every now and then because you're straddling lanes or you know because you're changing lanes without checking your mirrors and all of that if you drive very very nicely calmly and safely examiners can even miss things because they just relaxed and they could feel like the car and the driver you know are speaking together you guys are you're reading from the same page so the more you can relax the more you can just chill and remember that your examiner is a passenger and they need to get to a destination but the thing is they want to get to their destination on time if possible 
but most importantly they need to get there safely so that is to say move when it's safe to move but then don't rush and take unnecessary risks because even though i need to get there on time i still want to get there safely so always have that at the back of your mind so at this point as you would see they're now heading back to the test center and that was the end of it now bear in mind it was already a fail from four minutes to the start of the test So here at the roundabout, he will be taking the third exit, which is right. So remember that at this roundabout, if you are taking the third exit, then just like every other roundabout, you should be signaling to exit when you get to the one before your exit, which is the second exit. But a lot of the time, people forget and you signal too early at this roundabout. So as you come through this bend, don't be tempted to signal left. Just keep left and wait until you get right here at this exit then you signal left at the cone there to exit straight ahead of you so bear this in mind because a lot of the times i see learners do that So they are now coming to the end of the test so right turn into Brindley Way. Now remember guys the most important thing to remember on your test is to stay calm. A lot of tests are failed just because the learner could not stay calm enough to plan ahead because when you're not relaxed you see things in front of you you're looking at it but your mind is not there your mind is lost away far 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 away from the road and when this is happening you are not thinking you are not reacting so keep that nerves in check stay calm and turn your test around for good so that at the end of it you'd actually get what you hope to get from it and it would be a joyful one and on the other hand if it doesn't happen 
sometimes it might not be because of nerves it could just be you know something just happened spontaneously and you made the wrong decision and it could also be that you genuinely are not ready for the test yet then work on it come back again with you know a positive mindset and go for it do it again and get your license now remember it's not the end of the world and you get so worried about it and all of this packs on pressure on you that you then just worry too much through the test so relax and remember if you fail we'll just go back again and try it again the more you're able to relax and enjoy the drive the same way the examiner will be able to enjoy the drive and in that way you can get your license get your test passed and that'll be it so um i hope you find something one or two useful from this test and don't forget guys if you find this useful i would really appreciate a like so remember click the like button comment below if you've got any question whatsoever and um, i'll see you in the next video so good luck with your practice your lessons and most of all your test take care